Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and present you guys with my Righteous Fire Juggernaut for 3.21 Crucible League. Now, before we get started, I want to go ahead and state how you can acquire this. So I basically have everything on my website, pox.net, in a nice organized fashion. So all you have to do is go ahead, come over here, click Copy League Start, go over here to Import, slap it in, and import the build. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about this. I'm going to start explaining the POB before we jump into anything. But real quick, I want to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of pros and cons here just to kind of understand what you're getting yourself into. Now, the way I've built my character is it's a very tanky mapper who can still kill bosses reliably, but just know it's always going to be on the lower side of damage unless you kind of want to really change things up. So you can expect 80k plus armor with endurance charges, which make you essentially very immortal towards physical damage, except for extreme cases. Very high max res. You can get significantly higher than what this 80% is. This is on the much lower end budget. Incredibly high maximum life regen per second. A very easy play style with basically almost like walking through maps, but we would typically use shield charge. Um, I would say you're expected around to get 3 to 4.5 million damage. In the much lower end budgets, I'd say you're going to be between 1 to 1.5 million, and we'll talk about those as we go in, so don't worry. Uh, if you want more DPS, you can always look at the higher budgets that I offer. Uh, and it's great at most league mechanics. It's one of the biggest things I get asked is what league mechanics is this build good for? I would recommend literally everything except for Legion. Legion typically wants screen clear, you know, uh, explodes essentially to, to make the most out of it. And you can do that with this build, but we're focusing on the well-rounded league starter right now. Blight can also be a little tricky if you don't know anything about the mechanic. Once you learn how to use towers, it's no problem. Pawns. Uh, if using my leveling guide, you're going to want to mule gems. A lot of people don't like this. We only mule to level 4. It takes under 10 minutes. Damage is limited compared to other builds. We cannot scale crit multi. We cannot scale penetration. It is more than enough to clear all content. There is a big, uh, a big difference, though, between getting your 4 void stones and doing ubers. None of my content is going to be designed towards ubers. Might be something I put out later, but for now, again, I want to focus on getting your 4 void stones and league starting. Colors can be a pain in the ass early game, mainly because the build has a lot of socket pressure to properly utilize everything. Uh, we will end up using one unset in the far later versions of the build, but in the beginning, you just want a lot of sockets in general. Coloring your endgame chest can be annoying in the early levels, and when I say early, I mean upwards all the way up to maybe level 90. Uh, this is not really a problem. We'll be using hybrid gear. And lots of gear crafting comes from the Betrayal League mechanic. What I mean by this is... Damage over time builds fire especially. Uh, we have sources like fire multiplier. You cannot normally craft that unless you have unveiled it before. Same thing with like plus the level of gems and a couple of other things. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to jump into the POB and explain what I have done. So when you open this up, if you are a brand new player, here is what you can expect or should do. So the skill tree is going to be set on level 1 to 17. Over here, we have this automatic thing set up, so your base level will keep switching as you kind of go. Uh, if you look at the skills, it'll be set at 1 to 17. A lot of text here to explain stuff to you. Um, one issue as well is Juggernaut or Marauder has very low intelligence at the beginning of the game. If you copy this text here with the quotations and you put it into the vendor, it'll actually highlight any, ga uh, sorry, any gear with early intelligence, which is what you want to get everything running right away. If not, no problem. You'll get it from the skill tree. It'll be a bit slower, though. And then on the items, I have a lot of text here explaining for people who want to kind of take a step back and read a little bit more just to make sure that they understand what they are doing. On top of this, I'm going to go ahead and open up the notes for just a quick flash. There is a lot of text here. Mainly what is on here are things that people struggled with in the previous leagues. So, for example, uh, I have the breakdown of what auras you're supposed to run by level. I have examples of when you switch big auras and you lose your ailment immunity. You can read a little bit more of this later. I'm going to go ahead and keep explaining. So, <clears throat> at the level 1 to 17, we're going to be leveling with Rolling Magma. I know a lot of people don't like this. Um, so, there's an alternative here. And, well, it's not really an alternative, but it kind of is. Flame Wall and Holy Flame Totem is actually where majority of our damage is going to come. 
due to the changes to the caster gem recipe which you can no longer uh not caster gem but flat damage for casters uh we put a lot more emphasis on the holy flame totem and flame wall what happens is you basically drop a holy flame totem you create the flame wall and you will your flame totem will shoot into it and it will spawn phantasms and you can actually aim the flame wall so your phantasms are also shooting through the flame uh the flame totem sorry the flame wall and they all get the same damage buff this is actually incredible uh for when you're fighting the early bosses let's keep going um something new in this one in the 17 to 31 you'll actually notice that uh we can run righteous fire right we can actually run Righteous Fire in this setup here. Now, in the early acts, you're not actually going to have all of these support gems. This is okay. It's totally fine to run it just by itself. Uh, it still gives you a very big damage multiplier. So if I go over to my uh, my items now, and I turn this to 17 to 31, and the same thing with the tree at 17 to 31, you'll actually notice that we have a net life regen of 89, meaning we are effectively running Righteous Fire. Um, if you look at the items... Nothing here is crazy, right? Not, nothing here is crazy at all. It is just very, very, very budget stuff. Nothing incredible by any means. Uh, one big tip a lot of people are going to struggle with is getting fire res capped in the early acts. Remember, if you pick up an iron ring or you can buy it for three wisdoms and you vendor it with a red gem, it automatically poops out a ruby ring. So just getting two of those is anywhere from 40 to 60 fire res already. Uh, you can always deviate a little bit, for example, and grab like diamond. Actually, it's not even, it's in the POB. So you can grab diamond skin. This is completely optional. With that being said, I want to go ahead and jump in and show you guys an example of being level 20 running this. So this is a character who I'm attempting to simulate the changes with. Unfortunately, I cannot do it properly. Normally, you would have this node here, which will give us a ton of life regen. I can't show you. It's explained in the POB. It's the new uncapped uh, fire res node. So my character has 116 fire res. You would have 116 life regen just from that one mastery. So if I turn on my RF right now, you'll see that I'm level 20 and I'm not degening. You can run this as early as 16 or 17 with my build. Um, you can actually, it doesn't, doesn't even have to be a Marauder. You can play this on anything. So this is one of the really nice advantages in the newest patch. One of the cool things is because we lost the flat gem recipe, Sorry, I always call flat gem the uh, flat damage recipe for casters. RF gives you a big spell multiplier, which can somewhat compensate and help a lot with it. Also, when you're at this point in Act 2, you technically don't have to run Rolling Magma anymore. I will continue to do it because I pivot a little bit more to SSF. You could quite literally use any spell you would like in conjunction with your RF, right? So a simple combo here is kind of like what we were showing. You just drop your flame wall and you shoot your Rolling Magma in. Now, this is kind of when I dropped Holy Flame Totem because I didn't really need it anymore as I had the RF Spell Multiplier. Now, talking about this character, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump on another character who is just a little bit higher level than this character because if you are still using Rolling Magma, we are going to be switching it up. So, if you look over here, you will notice that there is a note for after completing Library, you can switch to Armageddon Brand, less DPS but more clear. So, we're actually going to go on that character right now to show you. So this is a level 36 character. I have just ascended, and all I'm wearing is a Kikizuru ring to help simulate the uh, the life regen changes. So I can turn on my RF here, and I'll just go in. This character is going to be a little squishy because I'm wearing like a, a pure uh, ES piece instead of an armor piece right now. It kind of always, you know, just goes with, kind of just happens to uh, be what I found during the leveling phase. During this setup, I also like to use my uh, Searing Bond only for extra single target because rolling magma is a lot more damage than Armageddon brand, but Armageddon brand is way smoother, right? So you can also just drop a Searing Bond Totem for some additional help while you are playing the character. Um, and then you will ditch both of these once you get your Fire Trap. Remember, you get your Fire Trap from Library, which is in Act 3. You want to make sure you're leveling it right away so that by the time you do your, um, your Ascendancy, your Fire Trap will be a couple levels higher. If you use it right away at level one, it's not going to do a lot of damage. So that is something you kind of want to pay attention to. It's not really a big deal. If you don't end up leveling it right away, you'll just use Armageddon Brand for a little bit longer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just hop off of this character and let's go back to the POB. So going back to this POB, um, this is currently where we are now, the 17 to 31, 17 to 31, and of course on our tree, 17 to 31. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and jump this a little bit forward now to the 31 to 40. This is in the past when you would actually normally start running Righteous Fire. Now I don't have a character to showcase anything here because it does not really matter, but just know that in this POB, I went ahead and put in some optional tags here. Um, the optional tag just basically means like it is not mandatory for the build at all. A lot of people do get flustered with, there's just too many drops and they don't know what gem goes where. So I essentially put what I would consider optional as you don't need it, right? Blood Rage is a fantastic option to generate frenzy charges and extra mobility, but the biggest thing about it um, is it also puts a little bit of a degen on your character. For newer players, maybe you want to go ahead and avoid this. All right, let's move a little bit further into uh, essentially when you start mapping. So I'm going to jump on a character now, happens to be an SSF, who is level uh, 71, so he just essentially entered maps. So if I take this POB and we just drag it to the... Uh, 60 to 80 tab we'll also go down here drag it from the 60 to 80 and we'll take the tree and drag it to 60 to 80 now i guess this one would be on 70 to 80. one thing i will state is that there is a respec that does occur at this point and i will show you how easy it is to do it in the 60 to 70 you'll notice i still have this arsonist section allocated now uh, i have changed the mastery from here up to here just to help get you ready for the respec You'll notice we start to kind of creep around a little bit here the reasoning to do this there's many different ways to path is so when you inevitably drop your arsonist pathing here it's only going to be one two three four points for you to make the swap so if you watch real fast you'll see that that swap has been removed and then we actually go ahead and remove a few more points here all these points are granted to you via um sorry via respect quests in the game so you don't have to worry Another really cool addition to this build is we got massive defensive buffs, I would say. We have this new mastery for 1% to maximum all res if you have reserved life or mana. We actually use Arrogance Vitality in our build, so that gives us one max res in the early stages. That means we don't have to worry on rushing Soul of Steel, so that actually technically saves some points in the early game. I like to get this after we have gotten our Uber Lab. And then the same thing on the Armor Mastery, you have one, uh, basically if you have armor in every slot for the most part, you gain an extra one max res as well. So let's go ahead and jump on this character and just note that there are a few things that are technically somewhat optional. Uh, you do not have to have Call to Arms and this character is not exactly up to the tree. It's it's getting close, you can see it's doing this. Call to Arms is for people who play very aggressive, kind of like the way I play, where you're zooming through maps and getting stunned and having your Infernal Cry get interrupted can sometimes potentially be death for your character. Uh, and I don't really like that, right? So let's go ahead and jump in real fast. So here's an example of what your bare bone basic, literally nothing is going to look like. I mean, we're talking about an item level 10 weapon with crafted fire damage with plus one, some random fencer helm I found at Walmart. Uh, I happen to actually, I got a good deal on this. This is actually, I say good deal, it's all SSF, but this is actually a good armor chest piece. It's got 1k armor, um, but again, it's just life and res essentially. Um... Speaking of life and res, before I start this map real fast, is a little tricky to put this in the POB, so I want to actually talk about it real fast. There is a new mastery that you can find um, on life nodes, which is 15% increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on an equipped body armor. This is very good to pick up at many points in progression. This is something you can always be like, oh, I found a really cool body armor. It's got super high, uh, you know, armor, but it's got that block and stun recovery hybrid. And because of that, it's got three prefixes with, uh, uh, so I can't craft life on it. You could use that body armor and take this life mastery. And then you could just remove it another time. That's kind of something that's really, really nice. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and go a little bit forward so my amulet is very bare bone basic it essentially just has dex and int um i've got a jingling spirit shield here with fire damage uh pure evasion or pure energy shield boots which would be bad right now because we do want actually armor boots so i technically have these i just didn't want to switch them yet and that's for the max res but let's get going so this is just mapping on a four link here's a big pack that you can see i'm going to jump into it with infernal cry and you can see that nice juicy explosion so one of the other things that I have changed with this character is we are no longer using Hextouch setup. Uh, I also just realized that this poor character is mapping on an endgame atlas with possessed exiles. Uh, we won't worry about that right now, F you ruckus. So uh, I went ahead and actually removed the Hextouch setup. And the reasoning for the Hextouch setup removal is self-casting your curses are just a lot stronger now. Um, part of the reason why is the big penalty on Hextouch, but also... 
instead of using your uh, fire trap on every tanky target, sometimes you can actually just curse them with flammability, and that might actually be enough. Obviously, for bosses, you're going to want to throw everything, uh, but that might actually be enough, and it actually is faster to cast your flammability curse than it is to actually throw a fire trap. So like that blue pack, for example, right? Same thing. Let's see if I can show you another quick one. Here's a blue pack. I just flammed it and I can kind of run through and the pack is dead, right? It's a lot better than constantly throwing fire traps. So that is one nice change we have done. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave this map here. Um, I don't have a portal on me. Good thing we're already back here. All right, cool. So let's talk a little bit further. You know, imagine you are a little bit past that part. You have done you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 maps, you're pushing higher, you know, what else is there to expect, right? So let's go ahead and show. So if we take the 60 to 80 and go to the 80 to 93, this is where I try to put a lot of emphasis, right? This is where I imagine most players get stuck, stop playing, you know, start to say, I don't have enough currency. This is where I want to kind of aim the focus. So this character is rocking about 1.1 million damage, which is not a lot, but your character is still on barebone basics. We have a plus one fire scepter with crafted fire multi. We are using a plus one fire shield. A lot of these items can literally be acquired during the campaign still, right? We have just a plus one AOE helmet, which you can find via betrayal. That was one of the cons I showed uh, in the initial first 30 seconds of the video. Uh, but this is honestly something you really do want to learn. Um, here we've got a glorious plate. I start showing kind of uh, the eldritch influences you want on your gear. Um, it's very important to try to get fire exposure and fire multi on your gauntlets. Exposure is definitely a lot better. I noticed a lot of players struggled in PoE with applying all these different debuffs. And when you're playing a damage over time build, it's really important to capitalize on all of these different forms of minus res. Uh, going down a little further, I've got some Vol Greaves here. You do want to aim for Legacy of Fury, but they're going to be out of reach for most players in the first week. So try to get Scorch on your boots. Scorch basically means that when you walk, you drop these little Scorch ground uh, footsteps and they shred the target's fire res or all res, which is very good. Uh, a plus one fire amulet. Just a standard Amethyst. I like Amethyst rings to get some Chaos res in the early game. And of course, an Immortal Flesh would be an amazing pickup. It is not mandatory at all, especially because we will have more regeneration in the patch. But typically, you can purchase an Immortal Flesh and you're done for a long time. Now, this is what I did um, this go around. I have made another gear set, which is at the end of 80 to 93, kind of like 93. And if you look at the DPS, just take a look at kind of what happens here. So this, this gear set is kind of where I imagine most players are going to stop. So I'm going to click it. We're going to go to the skills. We're going to click it. So that's going to be the 93 more expensive. And we're going to take the tree and go to the 93 more expensive. You'll notice the damage goes up by just about double. Now, the reasoning for this double is because of two things, three things. Number one, it's more expensive. Number two, it starts incorporating essence crafting. So if you notice on my body armor, I have a mana reservation efficiency essence. And if you are confused on this at all, if you go to my website under pox.net and look at crafts, I will have detailed information on how to go about it. The reasoning for this is with the new tree changes that everyone yelled about and said it's a nerf, it's actually somewhat of a buff for some players. There is a new mana reservation efficiency node on the mana mastery. However, they remove the specific ones like say determination. With this, plus the essence, you can actually completely skip out on needing to anoint charisma to make one of the big aura swaps, which is dropping your purity of elements and acquiring your skitterbot and your tempest shield. Furthermore, um, since people wanted more damage at this point, I've actually went ahead and added in a Dodre's Damning, which seems like a meme, but it gives you intelligence, which Juggernaut actually needs. It gives you all res, which is very good, and it gives you plus one curse. Now do know that when you're in this setup, you are going to need an unset ring if you want to be able to cast essentially Molten Shell, Frost Blinker, Infernal Cry because you need one extra gem. This one pivots into a more dual curse setup, and the purpose of the dual curse is to just get that extra damage for bosses. You do not need to dual curse as you are mapping unless you're fighting a really tanky target or a boss, right? If you look at the skills over here, nothing here is too unethical in this setup. Again, this is at 93. It's 20 gems with a 21 on the main one, so that would be fire trap and your righteous fire you've got your arrogance vitality you've got the new auras i talked about where you're dropping purity you're going with skitterbot tempest shield and etc 
going down a little bit further i have created even more gear sets although i don't think most people are going to get to these but i will flash them really fast so if i go to the 96 to 100 really quickly under the 96 to 100 you will notice it actually even has more damage from the previous pobs so this one is capping at around 6.4 million now do know that this is not beginner friendly and it is not really league start at this point this is pushing and i don't really like saying numbers here but i want to say 50 plus divines it's something more to aim towards right we also have another setup for players who do not like dual cursing i have actually created a different setup which pivots into aspect of the spider and drops dual curse and if you look at this setup it is a lot less boss damage but it does have kind of like it's basically one less button and if you go here and you change this then mana will actually fix as well so you don't have to worry about that with that being said i want to go ahead and hop off this character and show you guys what a more end game version of righteous fire will look like so I have a couple of Righteous Fire characters, <clears throat> only a couple, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and jump on one of them and just go through a map essentially so you can kind of understand what it's going to be like. So uh, I would show my SSF character, but it's using Lore of Eternal Damnation, and that currently does not exist anymore. So I'm just going to go into Sanctum, and I'm going to go on my Sanctum Juggernaut. Now just note that this character has quite a bit less damage from the one I showed in the POB, mainly because this was just... When I play my trade league characters, I kind of hit 100 and then I just stop playing them. So this is not even close to min-max of what the POB shows. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. I will take off this Oriat's end as this is not really supposed to be there. But my res is kind of messed up without it. But I think we will be okay. So when you have your Legacy of Fury, uh, you'll actually notice these explodes. The explodes from the Legacy of Fury can do a lot of the clearing for you. Now, normally I would also have Frenzy Charges, but like I said, this character's kind of in a weird spot. I was doing more bossing on this character. There was not really a reason for friend like Blood Rage or a minimum Frenzy for that reason. Um, so yeah, this character is a bit slower than what I would like for it to be, but it is still pretty solid. Now, of course, one of the best things about Righteous Fire, especially for players who don't really know a lot about the mechanics, you know, defensive layers, etc., Juggernaut is a very simplified version of that. One of the main things about Juggernaut is you just stack armor. You stack armor and you mitigate not only physical damage, but elemental damage as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just sit here for example. Oh, that guy actually... I didn't have my endurance charges. That's why. There we go. So if you notice, I will just sit here now and everything will pretty much be fine, right? Once you get your endurance charges from getting hit, I somehow didn't get hit through the whole map. You are totally good to go right you can mitigate physical you can mitigate elemental you have bonkers level of regeneration you are pretty much good to go and of course for your single target you would actually be applying your flammability this character is on the hex touch setup so it's in the older setup as well right um so again your damage would even be significantly higher than this character that is currently being shown anyway with that being said i hope you guys had a wonderful time i hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you guys are curious on some more information, I will be creating a level 1 through... I, I'm going to try to do an Act 1 through Act 10 leveling guide. I had one previously, but DMCA kind of muted it. So I'm trying to retake or remake that. And it will also be plugged in. I'm going to hate myself for saying this. I'm sorry, Ziz. A custom Righteous Fire loot filter. I can't believe I did. I, I hate my... Okay, anyway, with that being said, I'm going to catch you guys all later. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays, but this Sunday we will also be playing because of the league launch. Take care. Have a wonderful day, everybody.